evil. Tumatawa na yung mga seminarista. Evil. Okay? And masturbation. Yan ang pinag-uusapan ko sa seminaryo. Kasi, top three yan, sa most requested sins. <laughs> And masturbation. Now, they know. What are the three, what is the three fun principle of morality? Object, intention, circumstances. Okay, two cases. Give cases na ako, ha? First case. 13-year-old boy commits masturbation. Masturbation, ex total generis sua malo. It's disorder. There is something greatly evil about it. Why? Why is there something evil about it? Because the classicist worldview is that our genital faculty has an end. And the end or the purpose is unity and procreative. It must only be used in a marital embrace. It must only be used in a marital embrace. Other than that, nothing about it. Nothing. <laughs> Kaya na mga passionate pa na tuturo ako sa binari. Talagang pinemphasize ko, MALET! MALET! Kaya mga sumulimistas. Kung mga senior mga umisal po ako mamay. Stoto Jenner Sue Mal. Okay. 13 year old. Pero, they know. Hindi lang naman yun ang determining factor ng action. Hindi lang object. May intention at circumstances. Circumstances ano ang age? 13. Teenager, growing up boy, discovering one's physical assets. Alright. Intention, stressful. Stress due to professors. <laughs> Stress due to formators. Stress due to formation. Oh, stressful din sa seminaryo, no? Huwag mas din yung mga nasa likod. Mga formators na half yan. Huwag naman nakaka-stress yan. Pakita lang ako, stress talaga ng mga bata. What does that mean? The intention is sometimes, one, amoral, immoral, or moral. Pwede ka naman, di ba? Okay, letting go of stress. It's something physical. Discovering one's body. 13-year-old po yun. Now, is it intrinsically evil? Yes. Is it mortally sinful? Is it mortally sinful? Sumagot kayo. Father, sumagot kayo. Is it mortally sinful? Compare that students with a 40-year-old man <laughs> committing the same offense. Exploit of generous who am How many times did you commit that sin of masturbation? This week, five times. Almost every day. Circumstances, stress. You know, masturbation there has moved from masturbation to ipsation. What does that mean? Looking at oneself. No longer engaging in fruitful relationships outside. He has become selfish. There, clear. It's more than this. Penance. Anong penance? One hour pa, the three hell marriage? Hindi. Ang penance ko doon na binibigay. 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Challenge for him. 
please engage in good, friendly relationship. Why? Because the more friendly relationships that you have, the less frequency of masturbation. Are we clear? Yes. Their penance becomes what? Creative. Now, Boots a 12 year, 13 year old boy. It's not more than a for me. In fact, it is what? What kind of sin? Binyan. I don't have a distinction between mortal and binyan. Kapag isa sa tatlong condition say wala, binyan. Great matter, full knowledge, full consent. Kapag isa doon wala, binyan. Right? So, bakit naging binyan? Great matter. Objectively wrong? Yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, full knowledge? No. More so, full consent. Full consent is affected by circumstances, which means emotionally, he does not have full control of his faculties. Thus, you see the nuances. Okay, ano nangyari doon sa RH law? May nangyari. I was invited by Archbishop Ledesma and the bishops together. I said to them, tingnan niyo po, I am just concerned about making sweeping statements such as, yes to our age is no to life. Tinihin niyo. <laughs> Mano ko kasi sa atin? Yes to our age is no to life. Alright? Now, two cases. Case number one. Case number one. Popol, Forbes Park, two children decided to use artificial birth control. Intention, because it is a bother for their career. Therefore, they will use artificial birth control. Circumstances, they can still afford another child. In that circumstance, great matter, full knowledge, full consent, object, intention, circumstance, are they committing sin? Yes. Is it mortally yes. sinful? Yes. Case number two, Fowl number two, payatas, four children, lavandera, casual carpintero. They try their very best to use one of the six church-recognized artificial uh, natural family planning. They know there are six church-recognized natural family planning methods, but still, they were not able to achieve their target of what we call responsible parenthood. They went to the parish priest, at the end of the day, the parish priest said, it's your call. At the end of the day, they made the decision. They use condom, okay? The use of condom is artificial birth control, which is intrinsically evil. Wrong, tama, okay. It's total general so malo. Okay. Next, object. Intention. They can no longer afford to have another mouth to feed. Okay. Is their intention noble? Yes. yes. Circumstances of extreme poverty. All right. Would that warrant such the use? Yes. Now, are they committing something that is mortally sinful? Tama kayo. I said to them, it is linear sin. But, <laughs> there is what we call in moral theology, a clause known as law of graduality. That the parish priest has an obligation to, step by step, allow them to apply the teachings of the church on natural family planning and to see the wisdom behind a chaste life. So that later, they really try as best as possible to apply one of the six church-recognized methods of natural family planning. Alam niyo yun eh? Law of Law of Graduality is found in number 34 of Familiaris Consortium. 
uh, from a classicist worldview to a historicist worldview, that's the big shift. And the shift is this. It is found in the method. In pre-Vatican II, the, sh the, the method was deductive. Itong mga tinuro ng simbahan, itong mga principles, i-apply nyo. Ama? Okay? After Vatican II, you begin with experience, which is inductive. You look into the nuanced sense of the situation. You look into the culture, the traditions, the practices. You read the signs of the times. Now, let me end. The paradigm shifts that we have studied, scripture, doctrine, moral, worship, uh, my, my colleagues earlier, are not exclusive but predominant shifts. It's not either aura, it's not historical <coughs> over classicist. There were movements in pre-Vatican II that paved the way to Vatican II. They are the biblical movement, the liturgical movement, the charismatic movement. Number two. Now, to the point to ngayon. Glaring examples of the two worldviews and methods are Catholic social ethics, which is up to now predominantly classicist. If you read the document written by the Filipino bishops on homosexual unions, it is still strongly classicist. Sexual ethics, particularly in the area of uh, homosexuality, masturbation, uh, are still strongly classicist. These are the principles. However, there was a big change. Since Rerum Novarum up to Caritas in Veritate, of Benedict the Sixteenth, you have shifted in Catholic social teachings. Method has shift to see, reflect, act. See, judge, act. That's the method of Catholic social teachings. And this is what is present now in our church. It's a different worldview in terms of Catholic sexual ethics and a different worldview in terms of a Catholic social ethics. Now, theology and catechesis were different in orientation and method. They play significant interplay. Catechesis is rooted in theology and theology is a reservist of catechesis. Now, Pinyo kayo ng ano na case study. Case study that I give my students in the seminary. upang makarating sa isang tama at wastong pag-uusla. Ako po ay isang magiging asawa at ina ng tatlong anak na pawang mga nasa mataas na paaralan na ngayon. Dumating po ako sa Estados Unidos bilang isang mandalapay kasama ng isang matandang inaalagaan ko buhat sa buhay. Dahil po sa kasungitan ng matandang iyon at sa hindi niya pagkakal sa napag-usapang magiging sahod ko sa kanya, Habang nagpapagamot siya dito sa States, ay napag-isipan ko kong iwanan siya at makipagsapalaran na lamang dito. Ang ginawa ko pong pagkatakas sa kanya ay lalo pang nakabuti sa akin at gayon din naman sa aking mga anak na pinapag-aaral ko dahil mas malaki pa ang pinikita ko ngayon. Napakahirap po ng mawalik sa aking mahal sa buhay, subalit tinitiis ko na lang po ang kalimutang alam-alam sa kanila 
Dahil wala din namang mangyayari sa isang third year high school lamang na katulad mo, babalik ako sa Pilipinas. Hindi mo rin maasahan ang aking asawa na kulang pa ang pinikita bilang isang karpintero sa ipagubuhay namin. Ang pinakaharap ko pong suliranin ngayon ay ang pagkawalang visa ng aking tourist visa. Bale, hindi na po ako ngayon dito at kahit anumang oras ay maaaring mahuli ako at mapabalik sa ating bansa. Marami po akong kababayan natin dito tumutulong sa akin upang magkaroon ng mga fake documents para lamang makapagpaduli ako sa aking pagtatrabaho. Lumapit na po ako sa mga kababayan natin dito ang lahiti mong mamamayan na at humihingi po ako ng payo kung ano ang dapat mong gawin ko. Sa ngayon po ay kadalawang bagay lamang ang pagpipilihan ko. Bumalik sa Pilipinas at harapin ang kahirapan o manatili dito bilang isang tihan dito dahil ay nandito na rin lamang ako. Ang tanging paraan lamang po na magagawa ko para maging legal ako ay maghanap ng isang lalaki na lihiti mong mamamayan na dito, bayarin siya at makipagkasundo sa isang fake marriage. Pero may dapat pa po akong gawin bago ako magpakasal dito. Dahil po may asawa akong tao, pinakailangan ko po makipaghiwalay muna ako ng legal sa aking asawa sa Pilipinas nang sa gayon ay ikasal ako dito at maging legal ang pagpigil ko. Ito naman po ay isang estrategiya lamang at ito'y gagawin ko dahil ito lamang po ang tanging paraan para maging legal ako dito at mapetisyon ko ang aking mga anak at asawa sa hinaharap. Kapag nakasal na po ako dito at maging legal ay makikipaghiwalay ako sa taong nagpakasal sa akin na hindi ko naman talaga pakikisamahan. Tama po ba ang desisyon gagawin ko? Waslo po ba ang landas na tinataha ko? Kasalanan po ba ang gagawin ko pagpapakasal? Gayong ito at para din naman sa kapakanan ng aking asawa, mga anak at mga kasambahay na maaari kong matulungan sa aking naharap. Imoral po ba ang gagawin ko? Kung ito po ay kasalanan, eh saan po ako nagkasala at paano naman po ako nagkasala? Kung ito po ay hindi kasalanan, ay bakit din po? <laughs> Thank you. 